about that time in retreat when a lot of people start deciding they're going to put together various unique little combinations of, of different practices that they know for themselves. Um, I'll do a little bit of this, and yeah, I can do some of this Vipassana stuff, but just doing this needs to be jazzed up or spiced up with a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of something else. Um, I would like to urge you, when you're in intensive practice of one particular method, not just this one, but when you're in intensive practice of any given method, to stick to that method. If you're trying to do two, three, or four things at one time, you're not really doing any of them correctly. And while we don't want to deify a method or consider a method wholly in itself, a method has a certain integrality about it, and it's been designed to get the maximum out of the way that you spend your time when you're working with that method. And you're dissipating your energy in a variety of different ways if you're trying to do two, three, or four things at one and the same time. That even goes for doing that additional metta practice which we taught you this morning. When you're in the middle of your Vipassana sitting, if all of a sudden the memory of your favorite aunt comes into your mind and you decide, oh, I'll send her a little metta, you're blowing your Vipassana practice. So you're going to use metta as a protection for your practice. You choose a set portion of time and you do metta. Then when you move on to do your Vipassana, you're doing Vipassana. So that mixture of methods really profits you not at all. So I do encourage scotching any temptations to try to do it. If you have a favorite method that it feels painful because you're abandoning, if you can look at it, you're not really abandoning what all of your practice aims toward. You're just aiming with a different tool. And at the end of this week, many of you will go back to other methods that you've grown to love and used over time. Some of you will say, hey, this method has really shown me something of value. I'm, I'm going to use this method to aim with for a while. But while you're here, do yourself the benefit of using the method as taught and not trying to mix it up with a bunch of other things. I want to say a word about pain. We're at the point where it will be no stranger to a good number of you now. We're going to say a lot more about pain tomorrow. I want to say just a little bit about it now to let you know that we know that it's there, to let you know that it is expectable that it will be there, and to give you just a little perspective on it. If you were watching a movie that was, say, an hour and a half long, and the movie was really engrossing your attention, you might sit perfectly still in even a rather awkward posture engrossed in that movie for an hour and a half and not really experience any bodily discomfort. If we ask you to sit for 10 minutes with awareness of what you're experiencing, everything that was going on in your body anyway, even when you were engrossed in that movie, it's not changed. It's still happening, but it's that you start, the concentration starts working. You start becoming aware of things that are going on anyway that you simply had managed to divert your attention from before. It doesn't mean that the practice is making you ill or is making your body sick or, or distorting your body in some way. It's a function of your awareness. The whole purpose of this practice is to become aware of things about ourselves of which we were not aware, and through that to become aware of realities and reality in a continuingly deeper and deeper way, all the way to the one reality that is, the reality of God. Part of our reality that we have been unaware of most of the time, the sheer discomfort in some of the processes that go on in our body all the time, but especially the places in our body where we tend to pack away our unresolved tensions. and. 
these things start screaming out that they're there as soon as we make space in our awareness to become aware of them. This is not something that will last forever when you do this practice. I, I also want you to know that it has an end. We can work through these chronic tensions, and as I say, tomorrow we're going to be talking a lot about working with body stuff. We work through these tensions, and they ease. I can remember, though, early in my practice when I was complaining about something to, to my first teacher, and I said, how long is this going to go on? And he said, why worry about it? It'll just be something else then. And that's true, too. There's always something more to see, some of it pleasant and some of it unpleasant. Um, for now, to settle back, and as I say, still move when you need to, to dissipate pain so you can work on building concentration. When we actually start working with body sensations, they themselves, when they draw your attention, will become the focus of your meditation practice. We're not going to stay just with the breath forever because we're going to eventually include absolutely everything we experience in our practice. But for now, do what you need to do to keep it, shall I say, toler tolerable, so that you can keep your awareness focused on the breath as much as possible. Things like pain, things like sound, things like when you're doing a sitting that I'm leading instructions through, um, you will become aware that you can sometimes stay centered on your breath, but with a lot of other things floating around the edges of your awareness. And that's absolutely fine. If your attention is centered on your breath, to let whatever else is there float around the edges, that's, that's doing the practice properly. It's, the aim is not in this practice to absolutely, utterly close out everything else as it is in concentrative meditation, but it's to keep ourselves anchored on the experience that we are at the time working with, which now is only breath, but will later become a variety of things. So that's perfectly okay too. I want to add one more thing to what we're going to be working in with in the practice now though. And that's the experience of hearing. Uh, aside from body sensations, which require more extensive instruction, and that's why we're going to get into that tomorrow's body day, thinking, body sensations, and hearing are most likely the things that draw your attention away from the breath. Whether it's that drone of the dehumidifier out in the hall, or whether it's summer sound noises outside, whether it's animal calls if the birds get going. Many, many things that we hear, we can find our attention has gone to and we're following them. And it's, our attention has actually moved to center itself on the, on the sound rather than having it around the periphery with our awareness still grounded in the breath. So we're going to add working with, with hearing. When you hear a sound, no matter what the sound is, we simply note hearing. We are noting what our experience is. Some people want to jazz it up a little bit, and if they're hearing birds chirping, note chirping. Or if they're hearing a motor droning, noting droning. The bird's experience is chirping. Your experience is hearing. It's the motor that's doing the droning. What you're doing is hearing. So if you remember, it is your own experience that you're wanting to note. You won't get confused about that, and it'll become quite evident that no matter what it is that you're hearing, your experience is simply hearing. Don't go looking for sound. If you find that your awareness has moved from the breath and is resting in listening to a sound, as soon as you become aware of that note, hearing. If the sound is continuing, you can let your awareness rest in that sound. Repeat the note of hearing about every five to ten seconds. Please don't look at the stopwatch on your hand, but just get a feel for it. You want to repeat it often enough to be sure that you're keeping your awareness 
sharply on target of what it is that you're paying attention to at the time. After about a minute, however, even if the sound is continuing, leave it and go back to the breath and begin noting the breath again. If a sudden sharp sound draws your attention like a door slamming and you're aware that your attention has left the breath to go to that sudden sharp sound, note hearing, the sound will be over about the time you note it, so return immediately to the breath. And if you're watching a sound that's going on and it should end while you're watching it, go back to the breath, or if you're listening to a sound and your mind wanders from it to something else, like thinking, then note the thinking and go back to the breath. So the one thing now that you will choose to stay on for a short period of time, other than the breath, is a continuing sound that has drawn your attention. If it's thinking, you'll note thinking and hopefully you'll be able to see the thinking die as you note it, because you turn the spotlight of awareness on thinking, that ends it, that snuffs it out. So if, if thinking draws your attention, as soon as you become aware that you're thinking, note thinking, go back to the breath. If hearing draws your attention, if it's a continuing sound, you can let your awareness stay on that object that has drawn your attention, repeating the note every five to 10 seconds, after about a minute, however, choose to leave it and come back to the breath. Anything else, draw your attention away from the breath. As soon as you become aware of it, note wandering, come back to the breath. Okay, if you will be sure that you have your posture established. Remember that feeling I said that the bones are just sort of stacked up on top of each other when you have your spine right. Shoulders should be over the hip bones. Two things to check for. Be sure that your shoulders are hanging loosely and relaxed, not scrunched up tight around your neck not even held tight. They should just be relaxed and limp. And also to check to be sure that your head is not hanging forward or thrust forward. And slightly tucking the chin helps. So let your attention rest inside the breath where you watch it noting carefully, trying to catch the very beginning of your awareness that an inhalation and exhalation have begun. Awareness inside the sensations themselves. If you become aware that you're thinking, note thinking, try to see the thought die as you're noting it, go back to the breath. If you become aware that your attention has moved from the breath to listening to something, note hearing, if the sound ends or when it ends, go back to the breath. If your attention wanders from it, note either wandering or thinking as appropriate and go back to the breath. If the sound continues, you can continue for about a minute to let your attention rest in it, repeating the note of hearing every five to 10 seconds. But remember, after about a minute, go back to the breath. If your mind leaves awareness of the breath for any other object,
besides thinking and hearing, simply note wandering and return to the breath. You may move to alleviate bodily discomfort in order to stay centered on the breath more. And be aware that not everything that comes into your awareness is necessarily drawing you away from the breath. You can keep things like my voice and some other things that impinge upon your awareness around the edges at the same time that you're staying centered and focused on the breath. Attention very close inside the experience itself. When you hear the sound of the bell, note hearing and bring your attention very, very close to that experience of hearing. ready to move into the focus of the new instructions this morning, the long-awaited discussion of working with body experiences. I've put it off as long as I have in the hopes of getting a, a deeper base of concentration on which to work because moving into a lot of other things with regard to the mindfulness practice works much better if we have gotten the mind a little bit zeroed into capacity for finer grained focus. When we're going to work with our body sensations of any kind, we do that a little differently than I explained to you about hearing. I said regardless of what you're hearing, your experience is simply one of hearing. But when we have all the wide variety of sensations that can occur in our body, we actually, our experience changes. The quality of our experience is different depending upon the different things that we're experiencing in our body. We can break these experiences down into about three major kinds of body experiences. First of all, there are temperature changes. Sometimes our whole body, our parts of our body will start to feel warmer or cooler or even sometimes burning or freezing. And if you've had the good fortune to develop a really good knee pain yet or a really good upper back or neck pain, you may have experienced some of the burning because burning sensation can be quite common in those locations. So first of all, there are temperature changes. And if I'm experiencing burning somewhere in my body, that burning really is my experience. I, in a way, am burning at that time, or freezing, or warm, or cool. So there's first temperature changes. Then there's the experience of motion. 
Sometimes it can feel like we're being pulled down very heavily. Sometimes it can feel like we're floating, which gives rise to many people thinking they're levitating when they're simply having a feeling of floating. Sometimes we'll become aware of twitches or quirks in different places in our body. Sometimes the movement in our body is, is minor and it can feel large, but somebody looking at us from the outside would never know that we're experiencing motion. Sometimes uh, there can be releases of energy that actually produce genuine movement of the body. Sometimes we experience swaying or rocking or vibrating or pulsing. There's just a wide, wide range of motion experiences that we can have in the body. And then finally, there are the third big category, touch sensations of one kind or another. Uh, there may be an itching, or there may be a feeling of twisting, or there may be a feeling of tingling. There's just a, a, an enormously wide range of different kinds of tactile or touch sensations that we can experience. All of these are experiences of the body of, of what the Buddhist tradition would call the matter part of us. And our consciousness registers these changes in the matter part of us. And they are actually our, our real experience. When we work with body sensations of any kind, be they touch, motion, temperature, we find a word that captures the quality of the experience itself for our noting. We might use words like floating, burning, itching, tingling. We find a word that captures what the experience is to the best that we can. This, however, should not become an exercise in looking for the right word. Gradually, as you become accustomed to doing Vipassana practice and you become aware of the same kind of experiences that you have over and over again, the vocabulary will come and, and you'll get so that the instant a particular kind of experience is, is beginning, you'll have a word that you've used before to describe that experience and you can very easily jump to the note that, that you use to describe that particular experience. In the beginning, if the right word comes, and for some things it's easy, if there's itching somewhere, the word itching is very likely to come very quickly. Some things are more subtle and we're not quite sure what would be a word that would quite capture the feeling of what it is we're experiencing. Don't go looking for a word. You can always use a generic word. If it's a movement of some kind but you don't quite know what word would capture the feeling of the movement, you can always use the generic word moving. If it's a touch sensation, touching or sensing, you can use a generic word if a more fine-grained one doesn't come. The noting is, after all, a tool simply to keep us anchored to that experience. And while there's merit in having our vocabulary developed so that we have a word that captures the different, for each of the different kinds of body sensations that we have, that's very helpful, that comes over time, and if, and if you start sitting there trying to find just the right word, then, then you're losing the momentum of the momentary moment-to-moment -moment experience. So don't get over concerned about finding just the right word. That will develop. In words, our gerunds, to use the technical term, are very good. Um, and you notice the examples I used, itching, burning, tingling, floating. I've chosen ing words because they capture the feeling that there is a process going on here. It's not that there is some thing called itch. There's a process of itching that I'm experiencing when that happens. So the inward captures that process and flow feeling of our experience. Some things don't lend themselves to ing words, and you can go to adjectives and adverbs they're much better than nouns. So warm, cool, up. If the feeling is up and 
rising or floating doesn't seem to quite do it up, down. So you can use adverbs and adjectives also, but, but sort of have the set to go for an ing-word if there's an appropriate ing-word to describe what you're experiencing. Now, we don't go looking for body sensations. As the concentration and awareness develop, we will find that more and more subtle experiences of ours do momentarily draw our awareness. And when our awareness is drawn to an experience, we then let our concentrated awareness sink into that experience. We put our awareness inside what we're experiencing at that time and work with it. An itch starts on my cheek. My attention is drawn to that itch. I sink my concentrated awareness into that experience in the same way in which I did in, in to the experience of the flow of air over my upper lip or the rising or falling movement, the sensations that are occurring there. I simply let my awareness rest in the sensations of that itch or of that burning in my knee or of that feeling of floating. Note it, as soon as I become aware that this is where my attention has gone, as soon as I become aware of the start of that other experience in my awareness, I note it, choosing the word that captures the feeling of the experience. After five or ten seconds, if the experience is still continuing, I note it again. After a minute or two, I take a breather back to the breath and go back to watching the breath. <coughs> We do this for several reasons. That does keep our base of concentration established to go back to the breath. But we also do it because we don't want to sink so much into something that we start using it to exclude awareness of everything else. If we go back to the breath, we make space for a different experience to call us out, to rest in it, should there be a different experience that feels the need to surface. There will be times in the practice when our experience is out here, back to the breath, out there, out to another place, and we're going to a wide, wide variety of experiences. There will be times when, as soon as we turn to the breath, the experience that we were watching before calls us out again immediately. Then we work with it again. Back to the breath after a couple of minutes, calls us out again, we work with it again. But we make that space to be open to whatever does want to call to us in our awareness by letting go, whether it is pleasant or unpleasant. Very easy if I'm watching an itch to decide, ah, oh, time to take a breather back to the breath and divert my attention from that itch back to the breath. If I'm having an experience of intense peace and stillness, which we'll talk about working with mind states later, as I said, to choose to go back to focus to the breath and let go of that is a little less pleasant. But there are times when that peace or stillness will be so intense that it just keeps drawing us again. Uh, so, when we become aware now of a body sensation of any kind, we go out, we, when, when it draws our awareness, we don't go looking for it, but when it draws our awareness, we let our awareness rest in that experience and we take our note that captures the feel of that experience. Repeat, if the experience continues, repeat the note every five to ten seconds while we're watching it. During the period of time that we're watching it, if the experience ends, we go back to the breath. If our attention wanders from the experience to something else, if it's thinking, or hearing, you'll note the thinking or the hearing, you should go back to the breath. Don't move between, there will be a time when you can move between objects, like you can go from a body sensation to hearing to something else. And for now, if it wanders from the first thing you've gone out to, note the other object, but then leave it and go back to the breath. If it goes out to anything else, you can still use your wandering note, anything that we haven't talked about yet. Some body sensations are very quick and sudden, and they're over about as soon as we become aware of them. Like if a sudden sharp pain passes through your jaw, you can note that. You can, you can note it paining, hurting, or if it feels like 
fire or something you could note if it's a burning or if it's a jabbing or if it's a stabbing or whatever it feels like. Note it, and it's ended as fast as you're noting it, then just go back to the breath. The ongoing ones you can stay with for a while. Now, before we actually move into working with this sum in our sitting, are there any questions about the instruction itself? Let's sit. As you establish your posture, check to be sure that your shoulders are not hunched up tightly around your neck, that they're hanging loosely, that your head isn't thrust forward or hanging forward over your chest. And think of aligning your shoulders over your hip bones. And then just letting the bones rest on top of each other. Just stack themselves up gently. Draw your attention to the place where you watch the breath. Putting your awareness inside the sensations and adding your mental noting of in and out or rising and falling. Starting the note as soon as you become aware of the beginning of the inhalation and exhalation. Not before because then it becomes a command to the body to breathe and not lagging behind the moment you become aware of the experience. If you become aware that you're thinking, note thinking, see the thought die, and come back to the breath. If you become aware of hearing or a body sensation, it draws your attention away from the breath. Let your attention rest in that experience, noting it. Repeating the note every five to ten seconds if the experience continues. And then after a minute or two, return to the breath. If the same experience draws your attention again, you can continue to go out to work with it, just remembering to turn, return to the breath every minute or two. If you find that your mind has gone out and your attention is resting on anything other than the objects that we're working with so far, then simply note wandering and return to the breath. Be aware. When you hear the sound of the bell, note hearing. Focus all of your attention on that experience. 